Hey, what's up guys, it's Matt with The Movement System. I'm here with Carmen. We are both physical therapists and we're here to tell you guys all about hip anatomy that you need to know as a personal trainer. So if you're studying for a personal trainer exam or you just wanna know hip anatomy so that way you can best serve your clients, this video is for you. Let's go ahead and dive into it. Okay, so to start off, we'll talk about hip flexion and extension, then we'll go to abduction, we'll talk about rotation after that. So the main hip flexor muscle that we need to know about is the psoas muscle. You may also hear this called the iliopsoas muscle. And when we do a marching motion here, that's going to be the hip flexor muscle working. When we're doing something like a hanging leg raise, we're working the hip flexors like the psoas in conjunction with the rectus abdominis to produce overall hip flexion and trunk flexion for something like a leg raise exercise. Hip extension is primarily coming from the glute max muscle as well as the hamstrings. The hamstrings actually attach all the way up here on what's called the ischial tuberosity on the back of the hip so they can help with hip extension as well. So when we're doing something like a hip thrust or even standing up and doing hip extension at the top of a squat, that hip extension is largely coming from the glute max muscle as well as the hamstring muscles. Next we have hip abduction. So hip abduction means that we're coming out to the side with the leg. That is largely controlled by the glute minimus and glute medius muscle. The glute medius is a little bit bigger of a muscle, so you largely hear that one being credited with hip abduction movements. Adduction coming back in towards the midline is going to be from the adductor muscles. And we have a bunch of adductor muscles. The primary adductors are the adductor longus, adductor magnus, adductor brevis, as well as gracilis. Now, not only do these adductor muscles bring the knees in towards midline just in a straight plane like this, but they also contribute to our squat and standing up out of a squat. So especially towards the top of a squat here, the adductor muscles are gonna contribute as we're coming up to help us extend the hip. Next, we'll cover the quadricep and the hamstring muscles. So knee extension, like we're doing a leg extension, is going to be from the quadricep muscles. We have four main quadricep muscles that you need to know about. The rectus femoris is the main quad right up through the middle. That one also actually works for hip flexion as well. The other three quad muscles just extend the knee. Those are the vastus medialis, vastus intermedius, and vastus lateralis muscles. Now on the back side of the hip, we have the hamstring muscles. So when we're doing a hamstring curl here and we're bringing the knee up, we're concentrically contracting our hamstring muscles. Now we have four main hamstring muscles. We have the biceps femoris, short head and long head. We have the semimembranosus and the semitendinosus. They all contribute to that knee flexion that we get when we're doing a leg curl. And everyone except for the biceps femoris short head also contributes to hip extension. And then lastly, we want to know about hip rotation. So with hip rotation, we have internal and external rotation. So internal rotation is going to look like this when we're coming out to the side. External rotation is going to be like this coming across the body. Now, internal and external rotation are, again, rotation at the hip. External rotation is largely controlled by the gluteus maximus muscle, whereas internal rotation is actually controlled by deeper hip muscles like our deep hip internal rotators. We also have the piriformis muscle, which primarily can do external rotation, but in certain positions can contribute to internal rotation as well. Another good thing to know about the glute medius muscle is it can be a contributing factor to hip drop or weakness that's causing the knees to come in. So that, again, is a frontal plane deficit here where the knees are coming in. That could be from weakness on the outside of the hips. And we might want to work the hip abductor muscles to keep us in a better, stronger, tall position. Also, march exercises where we're getting more stable and strong on one leg can be really helpful for that as well. All right, and then lastly, to wrap all this up together, we want to talk about what's going on at the hip during a squatting movement. So during a squat, the hip is going into hip flexion and the knee is going into knee flexion. So we're going to get eccentric muscle action on the lowering as the glutes lengthen and the quads lengthen. And then on the way up, we're going to get concentric muscle actions from the quads and the glutes to extend the knee and extend the hip. So it's important to know concentric versus eccentric. Concentric is when we're shortening a muscle group. Eccentric is when we're lengthening a muscle group. All right, guys, hopefully that was a helpful review of hip anatomy for you. If you're studying for your personal trainer exam or if you're just learning anatomy as a personal trainer, shout out to Carmen for coming on, especially if you're a runner or if you're interested in learning more about running, make sure you check out Carmen's page on Instagram. I'll link it in the description below. Thanks so much for watching, guys, and we'll catch you the next one.